Hey guys, thanks for joining us for another episode. Today I'm going to be tuning this beautiful 69 Camaro with a late model LS motor on Holly EF5. Let's get to it. So that was a cold start right now. It is idling right now. Um, I did already see some very lean material on the very on the very first like 16.5 AFR, um, but now it looks like it's stabilized 14. But it is already already in closed loop right now, so it's already trying to adjust. Uh, definitely gonna have to turn off the closed loop in a minute and get the raw table correct. You can you can hear it dancing and correcting a lot right now. And as it comes up in temperature, it's gonna just start stalling because I already experienced that whenever the car first came up to the shop. The guy was having to keep it rev, keep it rev, stalled out a lot of time, just pulling in here. So come in right here and then like, I think it's gonna do it again, Get zoom in right there. Oh yeah, all the way out to 20 AFR and then back down, it's dancing around a lot. Let's see, what's our closed loop factors going on? Saying it's only at about 20% compensation right now, which is not as bad as I thought it was gonna say considering the numbers we just saw, but that just means the tune is really needing help. It has a aftermarket wideband here that, like that's a that's wideband. Oh, that's cool. You can really see how the numbers are all over the place on that thing. Oh yeah, I just saw it. Okay, so right now, closed loop is enabled. I'm about to turn that off. Off she goes. And then I'm gonna send it over. Send to ECU. All right, I just spotted a major discrepancy. I was saying how I like that gauge, but that gauge does not at all match what the ECU is actually reporting here. This, this I feel is our actual number because the car is, sounds super lame, lean and unstable. Like it's gonna stall if I just barely blip it. I believe this number right now. It didn't stall, but you see the number perked right up. Uh, or right down rather. Yeah. Now it's like, and it's scaling all the way off. All right, let's go into the fuel table and see if we can. Uh... If you listen right now, you can hear that the car is very much stable there. All I've done is change fueling in that lowest in like the 800 RPMs and down below. Um, and, and of course the car is now in open loop, so there's no learning going on. Now we have a rich, a, a bit richer mixture than what we need to have, but it's stable and it's actually hitting my targeted RPM. Before it was dipping way under the targeted RPM because it had some very lean information all the way at the very lowest end of the, of the table. Okay, so I wanna highlight something right here where we are idling at about 850,900 and we are actually up at like 70 kPa, so our target AFR could be 13, could be 14. This is a, this is a step here where if we had a stock cam and we we're pulling good vacuum, we'd be down here in this block of 14.7. But because of this, I've got some odd, even though I have closed loop off, I still had learning on, and it was doing some odd dance right here, and I see why that is. I need to go ahead and unify these targets since that is idle for this particular setup. It, 
it got up to a, a pretty lean number there towards the end and I let out a little early. It was good through all that mid-range, um, a little rich on the hit, and then the whole pull I was getting leaner, 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 and I let out. So uh, I need to add some fuel into that top end and then we can make a complete run. All right, so I have on screen right now the data log for that first diner run that I let out because it was going lean. And you can see the yellow line is the target AFR, the blue line is the actual AFR. So here down at the beginning, I'm much richer than my target AFR. As we move up in the RPM, I get leaner than my target and significantly so, that's why I let out. But so I need to go into my base fuel table and I need to adjust the steepness of it. I need it to be, I need down here to decrease and up here to increase. So I need to steepen my, my fuel curve right now. Here's the AFR on that run, the yellow being the target and the blue being the actual. We stayed much closer to the target that run, uh, but we inexplicably had a huge horsepower loss right there. Um, all right, so on that last dyno run, I could see that the map reading was a little bit, um, not to say erratic, but it, it went up as if I actually did hit full throttle, and then it faded off really quickly to where near the end of the run, the, uh, the map reading was only like 75 or 70, and it should be around 100. Um, so I came into the bay here, and I see that there's a catch can set up. There's a check valve here. I generally don't like on a, on a, I don't ever like to tie the intake manifold into the catch can setups, but, so I'm gonna pull this line off the intake manifold. There is a check valve, but I'm breathing through that right now. Um, so that is an active vacuum leak on the system right now. I need to either flip this or just block this and hook it up in a different way. Um, this one's okay because it's going to the valve cover. I'd really like for this one to go to the other valve cover or to the crankcase uh, vent. Oh, there is not a crankcase vent on this particular motor, but so this one really needs to go over to the other valve cover and we'll be good. I don't want to tie anything into the intake manifold. from 291 to 431. Well, that was a pretty exciting result there. We went from 290 to 430 wheel horsepower with no tuning change. The only thing I did was remove that catch can that was hooked up in the wrong place. And that made my map sensor readings be correct, which made all the rest of the tune information be infinitely closer to where it needed to be. Um, so this is gonna be a transformed car for the owner uh, when he comes to pick it up. but it actually felt like on that run there was very little reply to my last fuel add. Um, I don't, although we do have a sensor on the fuel rail, I'm not getting the log here, so we may have to, fuel pressure we may, I think we need to physically watch the one on the gauge, yeah. Okay. This data log was when it was going really lean and you can see the yellow is the target, the, the teal is the actual, so towards the top going really lean. All this was richer than what it needed to be and then all this is leaner than what it needed to be. Now I'll bring up one of the new data logs.
Now you can see the yellow and the teal line are almost overlays of each other all the way out. There's a spot there on tip-in where it goes a bit richer than demanded, but that's not unheard of on the tip-in. But then it, it pretty stays, it stays pretty, uh, pretty level there. It looks like a little spot there for me to add to, little spot there to add to, little spot there maybe to take out, and then I'll have a perfectly shaped uh, curve there. Exactly as targeted. The timing is safe, comfortable. It's not. It's not. A, it's not conservative low. It's right in the the meat of where it should be. Um, I think that's gonna do it. Uh, he should be extremely happy with the improvements here. I think he was driving it around with like 350 horsepower or so. So I believe 100 plus horsepower was added, and it, and especially so at the very top end, where that catch can was creating a big vacuum leak and lull in power. Um, Time for a street drive. Yep. I can tell you it's already driving better because it was stalling out left and right when it rolled up and now it's driving very normal. Coolant temps are staying good. Yep, everything looks good. Looks yep. like it's gonna be a pretty uh looks like it's a pretty solid.